So we've turned the server on and connected it to our network. And there's a piece of software on my computer called QFinderPlo, which automatically finds the QNAP servers that are plugged in because we set up quite a few of these for clients. So this one here is the new one. And if I double click on it, it recognizes that it's not been initialized yet. And do you want the smart installation guide to guide you through the process? So let's click yes. And then goes to a web page on the server itself. This one is going to be used for business use. So let's click the start button. Next thing to do is to give it a name and a password. Okay, and click next. So let's set it to uh, the same as a computer device time. That all looks fine. And I'll leave it to obtain an IP address automatically because I don't know the setup of the client's network where they're going to plug it in. So this way, when they plug it in on their end, it will automatically get an IP address from its own network. And again, I don't know if they've got any Macs or Linux workstations, so I'm going to tick these to enable them all. Here we go. So we do want a thick volume. We're going to select all the hard drives that are in there. And we are going to set it up as RAID 10. So this actually halves the amount of storage space that's in there. So they've got four two terabyte hard drives. This will reduce the available storage space to the equivalent of two two terabyte hard drives and it takes a bit off for backup and snapshots. So let's drop that down a bit. Um, the RAID configuration stores the data in stripes across all the disks and this is the part that means if one hard disk in your server fails you can pull it out, plug in a new one, and you've lost no data. So although it reduces the available space, this is an excellent feature to have because hard disks will invariably fail at some point. They've got a limited uh, lifespan. But having said that, I've never seen two fail at the same time. So having one being able to fail and swap it while the server's still working is, a, is just a great backup feature. Let's click Next. Review all our settings. They look good. So click apply and it says all drive data will be deleted upon initialization. That's fine because these are brand new hard drives with no data on them. So I'm going to click confirm and this will then reload the page shortly. It will start applying the settings and the server will be ready to log into. I'm going to pause it here while it does this because this can take a little bit of time. So the server has finished setting itself up and we can now log into it with the username and password that I set up earlier. Right, it's letting me know there's a new firmware update for the server, but I won't install that just at the moment because that can take a little while. So this is what you see when you log into the web interface. And if I go into the control panel, you can adjust all the settings in here from the security settings, how you connect to various internet uh, facilities. It's got built-in antivirus down there. You can set up automatic backups. But what I want to look at briefly is users and shared folders. So when you set up users, you want to make sure the username and password you set them up with is the same as the one they use to log into their PC. Now the reason for this is when you map the network folders on their PC, it means they won't have to put in a username and password when they try and access the network folder. It will just pop up and look like any other folder on my computer. So to create a user, you simply click there, create a user, give it a username, give it a password and over here you can select what shared folders the users have access to. So you're able to restrict who has access to individual folders 
which is very helpful if you've got a company with different departments and you want to keep, say, your finance information of the accounts department separate from the information that the rest of the company may need access to. So give it a password and set up some and give it access to all the relevant folders. Now I'm just going to click cancel there because this is going out to a client, so they don't want me to have a login. And if I click on shared folders, you'll see they've put a couple of default ones in there for you already. But if you want to create a new share, again, just click the button at the top that says create, give it a new name. So for example, accounts, um, I always let it specify the path automatically. And then if you click the edit button down here, you can show which, you can choose which users have access to it and whether it's read only or read write access. So once you've set up some users, you'd see some more names down here with a level of access for each one. And there's all sorts of other options here. You can use encryption if you really want to secure it. And then once you've finished, click the create button and your folder will be set up. And again, I, I won't, uh, won't do that now because this is going out to a client, so I'll just click cancel. And if we go back to the overview, and if I go into backup and restore, there we go. Um, you've got the option to back up the settings. So once you've con finished configuring your server, you can back up all the settings that you've just put in. So if you do have to uh, reset it for any reason, you can do that easily. And if I go into applications then, and anti antivirus, you can tick to enable the antivirus, which I would highly recommend doing. Tick to make sure the antivirus updates itself, so I'd like it to update every day. And it's got a quarantine down there, so it does find any uh, any infected files. So let's click apply to that. And then go on to the next tab over here, which is scan jobs. So let's give it a new name called AV scan and ask it to scan all folders. This will make sure that everything on the NAS is scanned by the built-in antivirus. So yeah, let's say it scans once every 24 hours. And you can even specify if you want it to scan daily. Let's set it to scan at 3 a.m. Hopefully they will be using it then. Or you could set it to do it weekly on whichever day you wanted. So I'm going to choose daily at 3 o'clock. So let's click next. Scan all files. Click next again. Maximum file size for scanning. Um, you can change this if you want. I'm going to set that to 100 meg. That will cover the vast majority of files on there. If you've downloaded any larger files and put them on your server, I would highly recommend checking them with the antivirus before you upload them to your server just to make sure. And there's a little box here that says deep scan for document files. So that will actually scan the content of files, so for example office files, to make sure there's no embedded infected content in there. Now let's click next again. So you've got some options to choose what, what the server does if it does find an infected file. So I'm going to ask it to move the files to quarantine and send an alert email if an infected file is found. Now we don't want it to send an email after every scan. You'll get an email every day otherwise saying no viruses are found on this server. So by ticking just this one, you only get an email if it does find something infected and then we can get finish. Click finish, sorry. Um, so if you do want to set up emails on the server, you can see this note down here, you do need to uh, give the server a way of sending emails and you can do that under the system settings in the control panel and notification. Now I'm going to let the, uh, the client there set up his own SMTP settings to send emails, so I don't know which account he wants to use for that but at least I've put the antivirus scan on there to make sure it does scan every day and it updates the virus definitions every day. If it finds any infected files, it will pop those into quarantine, just over here. And I think that's about all there is to say about the antivirus. So this control panel is very powerful. You can change all sorts of settings in it. But having said that, you don't need to if you don't want to. You can set it up very simply just set up the users, the shared folders, and the antivirus scan, and then start using it. So I'm going to log out of that now. That's a very quick overview of QNAP servers. 
If you've got any questions or you want to know if this would suit your business, if you'd like to find out more, then do get in touch. Thank you.